everybody. I'm Debbie Reynolds with Rocky Mountain Lodge and today I am super excited to share with you one of my family and friends favorite summer recipes. I'm going to be sharing with you my secret recipe for my mango peach salsa and it is super famous. Everybody that has this always loves it. It becomes their favorite salsa. Um, we like to serve it with chips. We serve it on mahi-mahi fish. It's great to go along with fish and um, even chicken and chicken chicken oh yeah grilled chicken grilled chicken heck yeah okay my hubby likes it with grilled chicken there yeah. you go <laughs> and so um, we're making these with Colorado Palisade peaches which truly are some of the best peaches in the world um, not to be biased but everybody that has had them has agreed with me um, not to diss Georgia they have great peaches too ours are just a notch up um, Anyways, it's the highlight of my summer when I get my peaches in. And so we're going to be making this. And then I'll kind of give you a couple little tips as we go along about some of the different fruits and vegetables that we're going to be using. And a little tidbit or two about canning. Not a whole lot, just a little snippet. Um, because I can a lot of this salsa. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. One of the things that you want to do, I always personally... Oh, wait. Before we get started, I'll let you know that you can find this recipe in my cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabin's More Favorite Recipes. Um, this recipe and 499 others are in here. It also includes a free ebook version and you can get this cookbook at our website, RockyMountainLodge.com and click on the gift shop tab. And you can also find the recipe on our recipes page um, on, our gift, on our website as well. And so um, please like this video, share this video, comment on it, um, and we'll go ahead and get started. One of the things I personally like to always do when I'm making this is I like to wear little disposable gloves because it kind of saves my fingers from getting all cut, um, cut when you're working with a lot of liquids for hours on end. Um, uh, my fingers tend to get all pruney and then I'll end up with little cuts over by my little nails and they hurt and they take like a couple weeks to heal and then I have band-aids everywhere. So I like to wear little disposable gloves. Um, it's not always as easy to handle stuff with gloves when you're cutting but I like to do it anyways. And then I'm going to show you a little bit about jalapenos. Some of the ingredients we're going to be using are jalapenos. You want four medium-sized jalapenos for this recipe. And the way you can tell if a jalapeno is going to be hot or mild is uh, if a jalapeno is smooth and has no little imperfections or anything on it, it's going to be mild. So this is a mild jalapeno. This one, it doesn't have lots of them, but you can see these little lines right here. These are called striations, and these are going to make them hotter. This one has some too. This one just has one on it. But you can see that little line right there. That's called the striation. So these two peppers would be hotter. This one would be more mild. And that's because most likely they had, the hotter ones had a little bit less water. That's Where'd why. Where'd you learn that? Because I'm smart. <laughs> he is smart. I will agree with that. All right. So I already have four medium jalapenos cut up here. But I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Show you a little bit of how I do this. What I like to do also is when I'm cooking like this, I like to have what I call a garbage bowl here. And so I just put all of my stuff right in there and then I'll just throw it in the garbage. And I'm just going to cut this in half. And then you want to get out all of the little seeds and the rib, which is this little middle line here. You're just going to get those out. Those are going to be super hot. If you leave a few in, it's okay. It'll just be hotter. So you just want to make sure to get all of those out of there. And I've got my water boiling for my peaches and my tomatoes. I already have some tomatoes done and some peaches done that I did a little bit earlier. And so, but I've got one of each left and I'm gonna show you how I do those because the biggest thing I wanna do is show you how I get the skins off. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'll come back to my jalapeno. So what you wanna do, I'm gonna set this aside too, is you're gonna have water boiling at a rapid boil and then you want to have a, a, a bowl of ice water ready. So what we're going to do is you want to take your peach and your tomato, and you're going to make a little X on the bottom. Here's the top, here's the bottom. 
Just make a little X along here. And the same thing with the tomato, the top of your tomato, the bottom. Just wanna show you how, to, how easy it is to peel your peaches and tomatoes. So then I'm gonna put these in our boiling water for one minute. Let me set my timer for one minute. Okay. And so those are gonna boil for one minute. When they're done boiling, we're gonna immediately put them in the ice bath because that's gonna stop the cooking process. But this is gonna loosen those skins right up. So while that's doing that, I'm gonna show you what I do with my jalapeno. I just cut this into really thin slices. And then it just prevents having to do tons of chopping later on. So I cut it into little thin slices and then I chop it the other way thinly and then you're done. You don't really have to do any more chopping other than this. So I'll add these to our other jalapenos here. Same thing here. Just give you something to show you here while our peaches and tomatoes are boiling. All right, and so pretty quickly slice that up and then you kind of have even slices as well. Okay, there's my timer, one minute. And so let me shut that off. Okay, and now I've got this little spider whisk here and I'm gonna pull these out. You can see our tomato, the skin is coming right off of that. And our peach, it's not quite doing that yet, but you will see that it will here in a moment. And then I'll shut that off and I'm gonna let those sit there in that ice bath just to get that cooking to stop here for a moment while I show you how to chop up a little cilantro. What you think cilantro isn't hard to chop. I used to be super picky and I would just peel off every single leaf off of my cilantro until I found out from chefs, you don't need to do that. And that was a horrible task. That was that would take a long time. And so I've learned not to be picky. I did learn from other chefs that the stems actually have just as much, if not more, flavor than the leaves. Now and some, they all now some, on. some folks don't like cilantro. They don't have to put it in this, do they? No, you don't have to, but it's going to kind of get masked by the flavors if you let it sit for a while, if it's canning. But if it's not canning, then you, you can skip the cilantro. I like it. Or just put a little less in. I don't understand it, but I guess it's just different people's palates. Some people say it tastes like... What do people say it tastes like? Is it like? like glue or something? No, not glue. I Whatever it is, it, it's, it's hor soap. They so, think it tastes right. like Some soap. Some people think it tastes like soap yeah. to them. Yeah. So if you're watching this and you don't like cilantro, you think it tastes like soap, well, there you go. If you don't like eating soap, don't use it. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to get this out of my way. And so now I'm going to get these peaches and tomatoes, and I will show you what we do here. I'm going to get my garbage bowl here. And so you can see the skins on the tomatoes just slip right off throw those in there and the same thing with the peaches you just start at the x where you started and they will just slip right off nice and easy you want to make sure that your peaches are ripe if your yeah. peaches are not very ripe they're not going to come off so easily and then it's kind of a pain in the rear and i've had that happen before i end up trying to get out a potato peeler and try to peel them and it's just a disaster yeah a pain in the butt so so anyway, so you can see how those just come right off super easy. And they're super slippery. They are, So, which right. is also a good reason I like to wear my gloves with these. So now I'm just gonna quarter up my tomatoes. And if you have little stems up on the top, I just cut those off, throw those in your garbage bowl. And so tomatoes, I'll tell you as we put everything in our big bowl, how much of everything I have. All right, so our tomatoes are ready. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take, you can see there's little seeds in there. You can see the little seeds. So I'm just gonna scoop out those seeds into my bowl right here and just leave the flesh. Same thing with this one. Scoop out those seeds and just leave the flesh of the tomato. And do this with all four of them. Four quarters. All right. 
one more. Well, I got a bunch of them done ahead of time, so that way I wouldn't take up all this time. And then you just want to chop them up roughly. It doesn't really matter. You can just coarsely chop these. So that way you have a little bit of chunkiness to your salsa. Now, if you like restaurant style salsa, you can put all of this in the blender for a few seconds to whirl it up together. We like it chunky. And so we just leave it like this. So I'll take the rest of my tomatoes and add them to my bowl of tomatoes here. And then for my peach, I will use a smaller knife. And for this, I'm just gonna go around peaches, you know, have a little line around this outside. So I'm just gonna go around the outside of that line and then just open it up in half and take the pit out. This and one's working pretty good, huh? They do, if they're ripe, they'll come out nice and easy. If they're not ripe, it'll be difficult. And these I'll just kind of quarter each half and then I'll just kind of slice them up. I don't like to slice them too tiny because we like our peaches to be the star of the salsa. So I don't chop these too much, just like that. And then I'll throw these in here. Now you can see the little bit difference in color. These peaches have been sitting for about an hour. These one, This is the one I just did. So these are starting to oxidize just a tiny bit. Now if you want everything to stay nice and pretty, the color, just add a little bit of fruit fresh to those. Sprinkle a little bit of fruit fresh on there and you'll be all good to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna get rid of this. And we're gonna add all of our ingredients together. I can take my gloves off now. With jalapenos, I did this this morning and I needed to pull my glove off really fast and so I put it in my mouth and pulled it off. Big mistake, jalapenos. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just gonna get a big bowl and I'll tell you everything we've got going on in our salsa here. So we're gonna start here, let me get a spoon, with um, three cups of chopped peaches, fresh peaches that we have peeled, seeded, and chopped. And then this is three cups of mangoes, which I've chopped a little bit smaller than the peaches because we want the peaches to be the star. And they don't have to be fresh mangoes, they can be frozen, That's right? That's right. I actually buy frozen mangoes just to save myself the time from having to peel the mangoes. So I just buy them frozen. I put them in the fridge the night before I'm going to make this and let them thaw. And then this is four medium tomatoes, medium to large, actually, what is it? Large, large, I think. Large, large. Four large tomatoes, which I have peeled and seeded and chopped. So that will go in there. Four medium to large jalapenos. And if you don't want a lot of jalapenos in there, you can skip that or you can just try to get mild ones and even just do less. And then I have one red bell pepper, which I chopped and seeded the same way I did the, bell pe the, red, the jalapenos. So one red bell pepper, which I chopped a little smaller. How many, how many bell peppers? One large okay. red bell pepper. Be bell. Be 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 bell. <laughs> one large red bell pepper. And then I have one and a half cups of chopped uh, red onions. They're better than white onions. They are better than white onions. They're a little, they are, uh, they also give it color. A little sweeter. Well, they do make sweet white onions. Oh yeah, yeah, but still. And then this is a half a cup of chopped cilantro, which we're gonna put in here. And then for some of our other ingredients, we are going to add three cloves of minced garlic, one and a half teaspoons of cumin, or cumin, however you want to pronounce that, and then a half teaspoon of um, cayenne pepper. Just a little bit, not a lot. And then one half cup of white vinegar, and lastly, two tablespoons of honey. I'm just gonna eyeball this. So we just want about two tablespoons. That looks like it's about one. And I'll do another one. And, and this salsa really is a labor of love. It takes a lot of time and a lot of cleanup. 
When I do the, my salsa, yeah. this is a single batch. So you can see how much a single batch makes. You can cut this batch in half. When I'm canning, I usually make a quadruple batch and it takes me about nine hours. And so we're just gonna mix all of this up. And while I'm mixing this, I'll tell you a little bit about canning. And so if you wanna can, you can do this either in a water bath or a pressure cooker, pressure bath. And so what you'll do is you'll just get your mason jars, get these nice and hot and sterilized in boiling water, and including the rims and the lids. You'll want to heat up your salsa a little bit. I don't like to heat it too much. Because you don't want to really cook it. No, you don't want to cook it. I will add fruit fresh to this to keep the colors nice and vibrant. And then I'll put it in here, and then I'll put it in my water bath. Um, or my pressure canner and just look up the directions on how long it takes. It's going to be a little bit different for water bath than pressure pressure bath and what pressure you need to get it to. I usually just use the, it doesn't, there isn't really a timer on my directions on my um, canning book that I have for salsa, but I'll just use the one for peaches. All right, and so there is our mango peach salsa. I'm going to put a little jar and put some in this jar for my hubby to take with him. He has to leave and go to work. So I'm going to give him this to take out of town. You can see how pretty the, those colors are. And also if you're canning, you want to only go to about your rim. You want to leave headspace for the steam. So that's just going to be his to take with him to work. I have one here from, we weren't able to get peaches last year. So this is one that I have left from two years ago. So not too bad being two years old. It's still sealed, but this is what happens. It kind of changes the color a little bit um, as it as it cooks in the water. But that one, the canned one, probably tastes better than that one right Just now. Just because the flavors have been marinated yeah. longer. Yeah. And so then we can serve it. I'm just gonna serve it up in a little dish here. See how pretty that is? It's just so pretty and vibrant with all those colors. And instead of, the reason why I do mango peach salsa is because I like to stretch my peaches a little longer and so I'll add the mangoes. Now you can do just peach salsa if you want. I just really like to get a lot out of this. So I make a ton. And so I use mangoes to stretch it. All right, and then I like to serve it with, or everybody probably likes to serve it with tortilla chips. I like these blue corn tortilla chips. Oh my gosh. What? My husband does not. No. <laughs> he likes the thin restaurant style chips, but I tend to like these blue corn chips. So, all right, so there you go. Mango peach salsa. Delicious, so I'm just gonna have a bite and then I'm gonna tell you about what we're making next next time. Mm. Mm. No double dipping. Mm -mm. Unless it's just me. Yeah. I can eat a whole jar all by myself. Mm. So good, you get the crunch of all the little jalapenos and, and onions. So good, so anyway, enjoy. Make this all up yourself. It took me, just to let you know, just to give you perspective, it took me about an hour to an hour and a half. I can't, can't remember exactly. A little over an hour to cut everything up today to get all of this done. But that's quite a bit there. And that includes cooking my peaches, peeling my peaches, same thing with the tomatoes. So not too bad for this much salsa. All right. And now come back next week. I, I, actually, it's not going to be next week. It's going to be three weeks from now. What? Anyway, in, in three weeks, we're going to be making one of my favorite. We're going to get into pumpkin. We missed pumpkin last year because I broke my hand and I wasn't able to do a whole lot. So next, in three weeks, which is going to be, I wrote it down, September 22nd, come on back, and we're going to be making my favorite cinnamon rolls, which are pumpkin cinnamon rolls with caramel icing. My personal favorite. You don't want to miss that one. So come on back in three weeks, September 22nd. Don't forget to like this video, share this video, comment on it. 
And you can find this recipe at our website, RockyMountainLodge.com. And you can purchase it, uh, purchase our cookbook for $10 uh, at RockyMountainLodge.com. Click on our gift shop tab. And we currently have a half off special. It's $10 for 500 recipes and a free ebook. So I'll see you in a few weeks, guys. Thanks for joining me. And enjoy that salsa. Bye, everybody.